How do we survive in a world of microbial invaders? We fortunately have many tools at our disposal to protect us from harmful pathogens. Our defense system is arranged in levels that are ordered from general defenses against types of invaders, for example, viruses, to highly specialized forces that protect us against one specific type of organism, for example, a specific genetic type of influenza virus. The general defenses are the first line of defense and are collectively termed the innate immune system. This system is called innate because it is genetically encoded. So traits that efficiently protect us from infections can be passed to our offspring. The best defense barrier we have is the skin. It is analogous to the moat around a castle. Our skin is both a physical barrier that protects our vital organs and functions from the uh, microbial environment and an early warning system. Organisms that attempt to penetrate the skin are captured, thoroughly interrogated, and then often killed. The best routes for a, a pathogenic organism to gain entry to the body are via the air that we breathe or food and water that we ingest, or by being injected through the skin by a biting insect. However, these surfaces have well-developed protective mechanisms. For example, a pathogen that you breathe into your nose and throat has to survive a plethora of chemical and physical assaults, including being slimed by mucus and beat by the cilia on cells that line our airways and evade predatory cells called phagocytes that will eat them. All of these defenses are in place to prevent an organism from entering our blood system or gaining entry into a cell. But even if these defenses don't work, you still have plenty of protection options. I'll focus on virus infections now because this type of microorganism must be able to enter a cell to replicate. They are called obligate intracellular parasites. Not all organisms need to get inside a cell to start reproducing. For example, some bacteria do fine using nutrients in the blood or skin surfaces and don't need the resources found inside a cell. Viruses, on the other hand, borrow most of what they need to replicate from a cell and our innate defenses act by depriving the virus of what it needs. When a virus or an intracellular bacteria enters a cell, it is recognized as an invader in a matter of minutes because of patterns specific to virus molecules. The cell initiates a cascade of chemical signals to mobilize its defenses. Every cell in the body has this capacity. Some molecules regulate the intensity of the response, tuning it up or down. Some molecules alert neighboring cells to mobilize their own defenses so they can thwart infection by the virus, while other molecules actually damage the virus. Even at the cell level, there are molecules that give commands and those that carry them out. In some cases, the cell wins and prevents the virus from replicating. A somewhat heroic last stand for a cell is to commit suicide. By doing so, it removes the resources needed by the virus and can therefore prevent it from spreading to other cells. In other cases, the virus wins and produces progeny that will infect other cells. In each cell it infects, a virus faces the same challenges. All of these chemical signals, pathogen-eating cells, and physical and chemical barriers are encoded in our genes as our innate immune system. While the innate immune response is busy containing the pathogen, it also activates a more specialized arm of our, our immune defense system called adaptive immunity. When we teach immunology, the focus is on the cells of the adaptive immune system, those that produce antibody or that can kill infected cells. The innate immune response often doesn't get the credit it deserves. We are constantly exposed to pathogens that are effectively controlled by the innate system. We only notice the failures, the times when the pathogen is successful in establishing an infection, and we develop disease. Viruses, however, demonstrate how important the innate immune system is because virtually every successful vertebrate virus has evolved a method to confound specific steps of the innate immune response.